23 minutes before it occurred, I decided that uh, maybe I shouldn't pay the license fee anymore until they could tell me the original source of that report. And, and to this day, they've never told me the original source of that report. So uh, I decided not to pay them and went to court. There okay. you go. Well, that's, you know, that's the example of one man standing up and saying no right there and caused a whole bunch of hubbub. Uh, you want a lawsuit against them. And um, there's actually a video on that uh, Global Research News. Uh, it's you outside the courtroom, I think, right after it happened. Um, but I want to go to a, a clip of your your new film that's coming out, your documentary, Incontrovertible, the 9-11 Truth versus the BBC court case. And this is uh, Matt Campbell, who had a family member die in 9-11. And uh, he kind of guides the film, I guess. We're, we're just going to play a part of this. Uh, start at the beginning, guys, and I'll just cut you out when, uh, when I feel it's right. It's a longer clip. But uh, this is exclusive, isn't it, Tony? Yeah, it's the first time anyone's seen this. All right, so let's let's roll away, guys. We went to go and visit a chief inspector in um, West Sussex, and you present her with stuff that clearly is not aligned with the official narrative. They still choose to do nothing, and and I've encountered that at all levels of the um, British authorities. You know, whether it be the police. The Foreign and Com Commonwealth Office uh, say it's essentially outside their jurisdiction and they rely on the um, official narrative of the US. You, you can't see something be confronted with, with such evidence that is in direct conflict with the official story and just choose to do nothing, you know, unless you're going massively into denial, cognitive dissonance, wh whatever you want to call it. Um, I mean, whoever you are, whether you're in the police or not, you know, you've got to, to look within yourself and is that what you should be doing? Is it right? The police force, they're, they're regular people. Um, and yep, there's going to be some fear that they may lose their jobs. But this is going on everywhere. Where people are waking up to corruption and just things that are blatantly not right. And if we just choose to be silent on that, um, it's not going to end well for any of us. All right, those are universal words for anyone out there who is covered or confronted by untruths or evil deeds and doesn't stand up. You have to stand up. Uh, would you agree, Tony? Tony, can you hear me? I think we might have lost him. He's there, but I don't know if he's getting my uh, signal. So the film is incontrovertible. It's uh, coming out in October. And uh, it was shot in the U.S., Denmark, Switzerland, Scotland, Italy, and the U.K. Features retired cops, firefighters, politicians, and ex-military. And the aim of the film is to give serving law enforcement officers, firefighters, an insight into the problems with the official 9-11 narrative through the eyes of their own colleagues, many of whom have greater experience than themselves. And also illustrate the very notion of a false flag, especially an American one, is far from ludicrous but actually documented via the Northwoods document, something we covered here a lot on InfoWars, and to paint a picture of the modus operandi used in the past and now recently, and also to rip a new arsehole out of my old buddies, the BBC, which they call anti. And I guess today on the BBC, uh, it's nothing but queen love, because I think the queenie is now the the longest-running UK monarch. Is that is that correct, Tony? She is, and I'm thrilled about it, Rob. Are you bowing down to the queen? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're not. So um, what what are some of the big uh, smoking guns and evidence that you uncovered while working on this that you didn't know beforehand? Um, well, I mean, before I started work on it, I knew I knew all of them, really. Um, I, I didn't know that there were an awful lot of police officers in America and in, in the UK that knew about it. I mean, I was very aware of it, but... Um, I, I wasn't aware. I, I got a list of um, cops and firefighters, but especially cops, uh, who knew about it uh, from my friends in low places. And I was amazed. And, and everyone that we spoke to in the course of making the film, I always asked them the question, do you have any friends who agree with you? And they said, yeah, loads. So for the handful that we interviewed, um, I would have to say there must be thousands in America um, who who realized that, that we're being lied to. So that's the reason I made the film. Um, and, and God willing, you know, when people see that, they'll, they'll realize that. 
Right. Yeah. All you have to do, we were just showing up, up there, uh, controlled demolitions next to building seven. And it fought, and in addition to the foreknowledge, which the BBC had because they reported on it 20 minutes before it fell, you can also just watch the building fall. Buildings don't fall like that unless it's a controlled demolition. And if it's a controlled demolition, that means somebody was setting explosives inside the building. Uh, last night on the nightly news, we played a clip of emergency manager who worked inside building seven, Barry Jennings who was hearing explosions coming from underneath him. He's trying to get out of the building, and, and the buildings hadn't fallen yet. They were still up at the time when he's trying to get out. He walks through the lobby, and the uh, and it's strewn with bodies. It's totally destroyed, and he thinks he, he can't figure out why. And they keep telling him, well, it was the boiler room that was on fire. And he goes, no, nah, I'm, a, I'm a boiler guy. I know what a boiler uh, explosion sounds like, and that was no boiler explosion. Well, he gets leukemia and dies before he's going to testify. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? And then we also uh, played a clip of Willie Rodriguez, who is a, he was a janitor there, who heard explosions at, underneath him at the World Trade Center before the planes hit. So, But these guys will never see the light of day, and in, in the, they're not in the government NIST report. They're not in the 9-11 Commission report. They're, they're left out of everything. So it's, it's a few small individuals that we have to fight against, but it's good that people are waking up. Um, this next clip uh, has a... Uh, Ray, it's Ray Savage, who's a 15-year Sussex police officer. How did you meet up with him, and, and what's his? Uh, how does he tie into the film? Uh, Ray trotted up to um, when I went to court against the BBC. He he turned up and and we met, um, and you, you know it, it was it was refreshing to meet a police officer uh, when you go to court against the BBC or the establishment. And, and told me that he felt the same way. And I said, well, would you be willing to go on camera? Uh, he said, yes, he would. And so I, I filmed him and went to his, his rather nice house in, uh, in Sussex, near, near where I live. And uh, we, we chatted for uh, an hour or two, and, and we have this little clip you're about to show. Yeah, let's roll the clip now, and then we'll come back and, uh, and finish up here. Joined as a cadet in 66, became a regular officer in 68, uh, in my 19th year, and uh, was posted to Brighton. Um, but so really one of the highlights of, of my career was working on the regional crime squad. Uh, I did intelligence work with the regional six regional crime squad, which now doesn't exist uh, in some other form. I also worked uh, as a terrorist officer at Gatwick Airport uh, in uh, counterterrorism and, uh, and quite a few other things. I did a lot of surveillance work, um, taught surveillance, uh, was in the training department, had quite a checkered career. I, I had great disquiet really about what went on and uh, when I saw the evidence of Building 7 and the collapse of that, I'd actually seen many controlled demolitions, actually police one or two. And, you know, when I saw that Building 7 pancake, I absolutely knew that that was a controlled demolition. There was just no doubt in my mind from the experience of seeing demolitions uh, where, you know, as a police officer, having to go there and actually put, throw a cordon around the building whilst it was pancake down. So that really had me questioning. And then, of course, when I saw the BBC News programme, and the 24-hour program with Jane Stanley announcing that Building 7 had fallen and seeing the disparity <laughs> of the time. The, I think it was about a 20-minute in advance. Obviously, uh, you know, she had very strong psychic powers or uh, uh, perhaps the script was uh, read in, in advance and that's certainly the, the, the version that I prefer to believe. So really, my, my, my whole questioning um, uh, 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 of that incident started then. There you really go. Started to dig into that's a 15 senior veteran police officer who doesn't buy what he's seeing. You can find more information on Incontrovertible at killingauntiefilms.co.uk, killingauntiefilms.co.uk. Now, Tony, did you ever get a hold of Jane Stanley? Were you ever to confront her and get her side of the story? Well, well no, because Jane, Jane's, Jane's been interviewed before, and I, and I don't hold any grievance against Jane Stanley. I don't hold any grievance against Philip Hayden, who was the the news anchor in London when that happened, I don't think they had anything to do with it. No, I don't uh, think so either. But they got the talking points and they read them. And they did. I mean, Philip Hayden has been interviewed. You can go onto the internet and look and, and see that. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I, I didn't bother to get hold of them. Um, I just got hold of law enforcers who were used to analysing evidence and used to analysing, you know, the story of a crime from beginning to end, and and and. I, I, 
seeing what they have to say. Yeah, people so. using logic and deductive reasoning, which is what exactly opposite of what you got with 9-11 and the commission report. You got a bunch of hearsay, you got a bunch of blacked out documents, 28 pages are missing. Hey, who cares? Exactly, yeah. You know, exactly. we're now we're going to go fight wars, endless wars in uh, the Middle East and try to conquer that for oil. We're going to get uh, the Brits involved. I mean, what's been the total fallout in your country? I mean, uh, in terms of the devastation of sending men to war and those men coming back, we have a lot of wounded veterans here who are totally distraught. They're on psychotropic drugs that commit suicide. I mean, what's the fallout like in the UK? Well, the, even the mainstream media have reported, Rob, that we, we have more men committing suicide than who have died in combat, or well, men and women, I guess. So I, I shouldn't exclude ladies. Um, and, you know, it's going to cost this country an awful lot of women. I mean, England remains the wagging tail of American foreign policy. And much as I love America, and I do, I, I lived there for many years, and I, I love the United States, but your government really is, um, I don't... I, oh, I don't want to use the word on, 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 the, uh, on the internet. But, um, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we have... I think it's 22 a day, isn't it, in, in the United States are committing suicide. We have more guys committing suicide that have died in combat in the UK. So that's the fallout. And, and it's, Yes, it's that, been, that is the real tragedy going on there. It's not just the going into other countries and killing other people and taking their land and property and resources. And it's also when the guys come back... They feel guilty. They see what they were doing was a false mission. They see all the hypocrisy behind it. And then they can't live with themselves. And that is, it's very sad. So uh, I guess we got we got about a minute and a half left here. Uh, what, what's the final information that you would like to impart to people? Uh, and, and when your film's going to release in October, how are you going to release it? Uh, we're going we're gonna to have a screening in London, at a cinema in London, uh, so people can come along and, and buy the DVD. The concept of the film is very simple. Um, we're going to sell the DVDs at the, at, at the screening. You can buy it online at Killing Auntie Films. It will be released in a in a, a very small sort of paper sleeve, so you can give it to fit in its pocket. Um, and, it, and it says it's a film for police officers by police officers. So hopefully they can go home and watch it and get the information that's been withheld from them by the mainstream media for all these years. There you go. Tony, I recommend you put it out on the internet for free as well. That is something Alex Jones pioneered, and he's still able to sell DVDs. You still will find people to support you. So I'm, really, I'm glad you're getting the word out. I really encourage you to continue doing that. Thanks for making this film. And we'll be right back. We're going to have Joe Biggs here in the final segment with some updates on Fox Lake. This is the InfoWars, uh, I almost said InfoWars on the news, the Alex Jones Show, Overdrive Hour. I'm Rob Dew, your host. Stay tuned. Final segment of Overdrive. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Joining me, riding a shotgun, is Joe Biggs, retired staff sergeant from the U.S. Army. Uh, tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, David Knight will be interviewing Wayne Matson, covering this story. Pedophile enabling prosecutors and officials try to run a PA attorney general out of office. So that should be interesting to see what Wayne has to say. We sent him there on assignment to Harrisburg. Uh, now, Joe, you've got some updates on what's going on in Fox Lake. You are actually there on the ground running around what turned out at some points it was a wild goose chase. And uh, now it turns out that the men that were on video aren't really suspects. So wh what's going on in Fox Lake? Yeah, I mean, this is a really uh, interesting scenario that's unfolding before us over in Fox Lake. Like you said, uh, when I was there, they sent us on this, you know, goose chase through cornfields looking around. Thousands of people, manpower, helicopters, airplanes flying in the air for what essentially turned out to be a hoax. And then you've got this uh, manhunt going on for three men, uh, two white males and a black male suspect. They finally get security footage. The three people that are walking out where he was killed at that time, the cops came out and said, well, hasn't, those guys have nothing to do with it. So now they're basing their entire investigation purely off of the 911 call or the, uh, the radio call from Lieutenant Joe Glinowitz saying that he was in pursuit of three men. So that's all they're going off on. But what we do know is this 52-year-old lieutenant had been shot twice. Now, once towards the back of the neck, and one, the interesting shot, the fatal blow that the coroner said, was under his vest in the stomach and the torso region. And they said that's due to maybe possibly someone coming in that knew him, got close to him, and was able to kind of get that shot in there. So here kind of comes the, the, the weird scenario. What happened? The coroner came out and he says, he's not saying that it's just a homicide. He's not ruling out suicide and he's not ruling out an accident. So that's the controversial comments that have been coming in. That the coroner's comments say put the entire uh, case at risk 
And the police officer and the people there in the task force are upset that he came out and said that. So there's something really weird going on. He was a G.I. Joe. This police station has been under investigation. The chief of police there was just uh, 